Master Drilling has described its full-year performance as resilient. This as the company's revenue rose to a record high despite global markets and economic uncertainty. Group CFO Andre van der Fenter joins us now for a closer look at the numbers. Andre, an absolute pleasure. Good afternoon to you. Hi, I hope you're well. Wonderful, I am. Well, you guys are saying a resilient. I would say this has been a bumper year. Literally, uh, you know, all of the metrics are in uh, the green here, Andre. Uh, take us through the set of numbers. Yeah, I think, you know, we see this. It's been a tough year. I think uh, there's been a lot of things happening within our group. Um, if you look at the um, geographic split, um, what happened in South America, a lot of political events in the beginning of the year. We've had some um, events in, in Brazil where we had some ground issues at some of the clients. We've had, there were some, um, at Cadelco, some stoppages there. So that was a bit of a perfect storm in, in North America, actually not too bad. Africa has been very busy. We've been so busy up in Africa and even, even in South Africa. And then we've seen nice growth, what we call the rest of the world being uh, Australia, Europe and, and Indian area. We actually saw some nice growth there. But I think the reason why we say resilient, I think we, we saw a lot of cost pressure from supplier side. We saw uh, a lot of inflation, a lot of interest increases that had an impact on the business. So it's and commodities, you know, commodities, some some were at record highs and others fell, you know, um, quite substantially. So luckily we are very diversified and, and we can move our equipment around. So whenever there's issues somewhere, we, we can put it on a ship and take it to another country. So a lot of thing that, things that happened in 2023, but we, we made it safely on the other side. I'm actually keen to also hear about your revenue mix by the business pillars, uh, Andre, uh, you know, and where you are seeing more activity uh, versus maybe other areas. Yeah, I think um, overall what um, what helped a lot in this financial year was we did an um, acquisition in 2022. And this was 2023, the first year which we fully consolidated that. So that added about $18 million to our top line, which played a, a, a huge role. And then, um, as I mentioned before, Africa was very busy. We, we had quite a lot of revenue coming out of, out of the Africa area. Um, some a bit more profitable than than others. So that's on the normal drilling side. On the um, sorry, just want to stop this. Sorry. Um, then on on um, the slim drilling side, we saw some recovery on the slim drilling space. What other people call exploration drilling. Um, some nice projects which we started up. So that that added a bit. Unfortunately, on the new technology, um, we, we did that project with a tunnel borer at, at two of our local clients here in the last couple of years. That came to an early early end, and we haven't been able to place the tunnel borer at, at, at another client yet, so we lost a bit of revenue there. But we're busy, busy changing, making some configurations, some improvements, and hopefully we'll put the tunnel borer at a client pre pretty soon. So that was a bit of a loss in revenue, but the bread and butter of the business, the rice boring, actually performed quite well. I must also ask you, uh, Andrea, what your results tell us about exploration activity. Uh, you have mentioned that Africa is uh, rather busy at this point. Are we seeing a lot of exploration activity in Africa? Are we seeing it uh, looking at those green metals? Uh, you know, I did see that copper did dominate in 2023. Yeah, yeah on, the, on the exploration, you know, it's, it's such a small part of our business. So we, we more focus on servicing um, some of our key clients. So we don't go like other exploration business go out and market it all, all over. So our exploration is a bit more specialized. We do some special projects, especially at, um, I can call the names at, at Anglo, uh, mostly in, in South Africa at the Mohalakwena mine. So a lot of our effort goes into that. But other parts of, of Africa, we haven't seen that much, which interests us. It's a bit of ad hoc projects that's, that's starting up, but you need scale. You know, to do a project up in Africa, especially on exploration, you need a lot of scale to do. And we haven't seen that yet. I know there's a lot of talks about Angola and Mozambique, um, where they start a lot of um, exploration, and then up in Saudi Arabia. So some of the areas we will focus on in the future, but today, not that big a focus for us. 
Uh, when I was going through the presentation, Andre, I think that stood out for me are words like digitization, AI, automation, robotics. It does tell me that Master Drill is, is looking ahead, you know, and I'm keen to find out about that, about the future uh, of the business here and even investment uh, into making sure that you are fit uh, for the minds of the future. Yeah, there are a lot of focus has gone in there um, over the last several years. Um, we we started a process where we automated a lot of our race ball machines. Um, you know, as an example, we can sit here in our, in our head office and the machine can drill in Peru and we can actually operate it from, from this side. So that's the kind of things that we've been looking at. The rollout has been slower than what we anticipated, but it's something we're working on. That's on, on the race ball machines, on the um, exploration rigs, uh, some of the stuff that we're doing at, at Columela is a robotic rig surface uh, on surface and underground that we rolled out late in last year. One will see the benefit of that this year. So, uh, you know, and all of that goes about safety, keeping the people safety. And that's also part of the acquisition that we did in 2022 of the A&R engineering business, which is very much focused on safety of people, on um, controlling the, the lamp rooms, proximity detection, making sure equipment and people don't collide with one another. So um, a, a lot of focus on that. And then, um, like I mentioned, the other technology stuff we're busy with is the, the tunnel borer, which we at um, you know the second second version of that and the the big one that we've been busy with the last couple of years is developing a, a mechanized way of cutting shafts um which is being done uh, manually at this moment with the drill and blast method so that's something that we're very excited about um we are busy t drilling a test hole near uh, close to our offices and once we're happy with the performance there it's, it's something that we would like to commercially roll out to the clients, which I think the whole industry is very excited about. Andre, we don't have much time left, but I really would like to touch on uh, the order book, the pipeline. I believe that's also looking uh, very strong, as well as the outlook for master drilling. Yeah, I think we're in a very good position. Um, order book, very strong. A lot of the order book is for the next 12 months, and then some of that going into two years and three years. So we're quite happy with that. And on top of that, we've got pipeline, which is up to nearly 600 or 500 something million dollars. Very positive uh, about that. And also, if you look at the commodity and clients, which uh, those orders are, you know, it, it is in the coppers, the golds, um, a, a lot of a lot of zinc, actually low cost zinc producers. So it's quite a high quality order book and pipeline that we have. So we're very positive about the near near future of which we've got visibility of. Brilliant. It's been a pleasure hearing from you today, Andre. Thank you so much for your time. And that was Master Drilling CFO, Andre van der